Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And here we're going to do an example with normal data. And we're going to conduct the most powerful test at, as determined by the Neyman Pearson Lemma, a Bayesian test, and a Minimax test. And we're going to go through it. So I encourage you to watch the previous videos in this playlist called Hypothesis Testing. So the example we're going to do is our data is normally distributed, IID, with some mean theta and variance 1. We're going to take a sample of 25. Theta, or mean, lives in the parameter space omega. And omega has two points, uh, theta 0 and theta 1. And theta 0 is equal to 0, and theta 1 is equal to 1. Now, with losses, L0 equal to 5, L1 equal to 2.5. And I'll come back to that in a second. So the prior probabilities, P0 is the probability that theta is equal to 0 is 2 thirds, P1 is equal to 1 third. The null hypothesis that we want to test is, is the null is theta equal to 0 versus a, the alternative, H1, that theta is equal to 1. Now, L1 and L0 and L1 are the losses associated with making wrong decisions. And the subscript, so the L0, the 0 means the null hypothesis is true, but we conclude that the alternative is true. And we're going to associate a, a loss of 5 with that. Now, L1 means the alternative is true, but our test indicates that the null hypothesis is true. And we're going to associate a loss with that of 2.5. Now, to conduct the most powerful test, you know, in the simple versus simple using name and Pearson lemon, we're going to let alpha be 0 0.05. The test function, phi of x, so it's a function of our data, is a 1 or 0 if the likelihood is greater than some constant c or less than some constant c. And the c is, is determined by this. Now, let's, let's find the critical region. So let's take this top piece here and write it out. So this implies that, you know, the likelihood is the, you know, the density under the alternative divided by the density under the null. And that means the mean is 1 and the mean is 0. Now the, the square root of 2 pi raised to 25, they cancel, leaving this. Now this e we can take to the numerator and the sign changes. And then the sums of squares cancels when we expand everything out. And we're left with this here, the minus 2x plus 1. Now if we multiply the 1 half in, take the log of both sides, um, add this to the other side, we're left with this right here. That the sum of squares is greater than some constant value. Um, and we're going to call it C prime. So that tick I call it prime. So that's C prime. It's just a constant, and I put the prime on it because it's different than this, but it's some constant, and it doesn't really matter at this point. Now, most books would go ahead and divide by 25 to both sides. So this would be another constant called C double prime, and this would be the mean. And this would be the rejection region. But... You can read that in the book, so we're going to stop one short and, and just conduct it with this sum. Now, if we call the sum of the xi's y, it's normally distributed with mean n times theta and variance of n times 1. But n is 25, and here, it's, we don't know theta. It depends if, if the null is true or the alternative is true. So the t uh, probability of a type 1 error, we're going to set it to be 0.05, but it's the expected value of our test function when the null hypothesis is true. So it's the probability of y being greater than that constant c prime under the null hypothesis. Now if we subtract the mean of both sides, divide by the standard deviation, that's a standard normal, so it's probably that z is greater than that value. And then, you, so this, you, it would be uh, 1.645, and then you can kind of back solve for C prime, and then that's the structure of our rejection region, right? If the sum of the Xi's is greater than 8.22, 
we reject. So now the power is the expected value of our test function under the alternative hypothesis. So it's the probability that y is greater than our critical value that we just determined under the alternative hypothesis. Subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation. That's a standard normal, so it's probably a z is greater than that value, which is 0.9996. So our test function becomes this. You know, it's 1 or 0. If the sum is greater than 8.22, then it's a 1 and a 0 otherwise. And that's the test. That's the most powerful test. So let's do the Bayesian test. Now, this is it's the equivalent of this test function here, but we call it a decision function in the Bayesian world. And so it's a 1 or 0. The decision function is a 1 if the likelihood, sometimes called the base factor, is greater than some constant c. But that c is determined by p0, l0, p1, and, and l1. And this is 4. So that's our critical region. So let's find the uh, critical region. So the likelihood being greater than 4, we can go through the same math. So I left off the, con the square root of 2 pi. Those canceled. This can be moved to the top and it, become, it reduces to this. Then we can take, if you multiply the 1 half in and then take the log of both sides, we're here. Then we add this to the other side, and we get this. The sum of our xi is greater than 13.886. This is our critical region. So that implies our decision function is this. So it, uh, delta is 1 if the sum of the xi's are greater than 13.886 and 0 otherwise. So let's find alpha, you know, which is a function of our decision function. And in the, in the frequentist world, we call that, you know, the probability of a type 1 error. But here it's just, the, you know, the probability of a false positive. So it's the expected value of our decision function under the null hypothesis, which is this. So it's the probability that we reject under the null. Uh, subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation that becomes a Z random variable, standard normal. And then this probability is 0 0.0027. Now, unfortunately, I can't hide this number here. I wanted to ask you, you know, given this, do you think this Bayesian test would be more powerful than the most powerful test? And the answer is no. If we go back here, so alpha is 0 0.05. So any other test that is 0 0.05 or less will not have more power, right? So the Bayesian test, you know, the alpha level is 0 0.0027, which is clearly less than 0 0.05. So it can't have a more powerful test. So to calculate power, it's the expected value of our decision function all the, all, when the alternative is true, which is this probability, subtract the mean from both sides, divided by the standard deviation, that's a Z random variable, standard normal, and this probability is 0.9869. Now the minimax function is this. So the structure of the decision function in the minimax setting is that we reject the null when the likelihood is greater than some constant value K. And we do not reject otherwise. Now Based upon the math that we've done before, this can be boiled down to the sum of the xi's greater than some constant k prime. And, it's, uh, and we do not reject when that sum is less than that k prime. But the k primes are determined where these two probabilities are the same. So that's L0, the probability that we reject under the null hypothesis. L1 times the probability that we do not reject when the alternative is true. So let's find the critical region. So we have to solve this equation.
to find k prime so we can put it here in our decision function. So this here, um, if I divide L1 to the other side, so that's 5 and this is 2.5, we get 2. This probability, if we subtract the mean from both sides, divide by the standard deviation, that's what this is, and equal, uh, that was divided over for the two, the probability that we're less than, so we subtract the mean, which is 25, divided by the standard deviation, and this is a Z random variable. Now, it's sort of trial and error to, to find that. I used the uniroot function in R to find that. I just put those two equal and it popped out 13.11. So that is the structure of our decision function in this minimax test. So now the to find alpha, that's the probability that we reject when the null no, no hypothesis is true. So subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation. This is 0 0.0044. Now, do you think this test will be more powerful than the most powerful test that we did first? And the answer is no, because that's less than 0 0.05, and, it, and it, ha it can't have more power than the most powerful test. You know, that's what we proved in the name and Pearson lemma. So the power for this decision function is the probability that we reject when we should so the alternative is true so we subtract the mean from both sides divide by the standard deviation that and then this becomes a z random variable and then this probability can be calculated to be 0.9913 all right well that's all i have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye